This is another Barquet Reference Calibrator 5, the one we had a look at in the other videos sitting over there. And uh, the big thing about this one is that this one actually works. Because I finally got so frustrated with the other one just not communicating that I uh, went back to the source of it and uh, got my hands on this one. And this one, well, it works fine in Windows 7, so the other one actually has a hardware issue and I'm so happy that we managed to actually figure that out. But so, so I was just going to do a video about uh, how the software works and so forth, but uh, I'm going to ta I've taken this thing apart in order to replace the fan and, you know, give it a look over. And uh, I've noticed a couple of curious things about it. So it, this one is uh, about a year older, and uh, despite that it's got about uh, 5,000 less hours on it, I think it's uh, 10 or 11,000 hours. So it's a bit fresher, but it seems to be an entirely different uh, hardware revision, so let's have a little look inside. So the biggest difference between them seems to be that this one uses a Panasonic M5-1KYY511X52 picture tube rather than the Hitachi one used in the more modern unit. And probably as a result of that it looks quite a bit different on the inside. So most obviously the layout of the entire tube assembly is a bit different. Uh, but uh, w when I look a bit more deeper into the electronics, they are actually laid out a bit differently. I most notably saw that the fan connector is in a different place because that's what I want to get at. This one also, uh, weirdly, despite having done fewer hours, it has had its fan replaced, uh, as is witnessed by this rather dodgy looking office tape wire extension going on there. So I'm going to get that out and then going to put this back together with a new fan and uh, then we'll have a look at the software. As far as the logic board goes though, it seems to be pretty similar. They've just used to different brands of caps basically due to batch numbers and so forth. But yeah, I'm not going to take this apart this time. I am curious as to what might be lurking inside of this. Uh, uh, whatever you might want to call it. So let's just unwrap this and have a look if it's even soldered. Mm, yeah, it seems that an attempt has been made to solder it. Yep, it is soldered. Alright, so let's fire up the software and see if we finally can make it do something. I'm currently running a 720p uh, 100Hz signal into this monitor. Uh, and uh, it actually supports a 16 to 9, so resolution is just fine. You can just uh, uh, geometry it down together so that you get to, uh, everything looking absolutely perfectly. And the reason for this resolution right now, rather than a 4 to 3 one, is that uh, the, my bench computer refuses to do 100 Hz at 1280 by 960. But here is the calibrated Talk 5.04 software working and detecting the monitor. Would you believe it? And it's even detecting the sensor as well. So we can uh, start a calibration and uh, it prompts you to put the sensor on band and it'll just uh, run through the patches and give you a calibration update. And you can set uh, different uh, presets for pretty much everything. You can adjust for the linear gamma, all kinds of stuff. And this is, this is definitely going on the hardware level in the monitor because this is, seems to be a part of the uh, integrated uh, color preset which you can select here. And uh, you, you got this little monitor symbol on this broadcast white D65 and that means that, that everything in here is uh, stored inside the monitor in some memory. If there was a little diskette there, they're, they're stored on the computer. But we d you do actually get stuff which you put into the monitor and it follows the monitor so that's very useful and uh, if we go to calibration we uh, and start it that actually uh, updates the profile as stored inside the monitor so that's a very nice feature. Uh, sadly though I have noticed that there's quite a bit of discrepancy between the Barco meter and my more modern Spider 4 a quite considerable discrepancy as well all the color curves, like gamma and stuff, that, that seems to be fine. Uh, but for Barco it seems to de be detecting an extraordinarily low color temperature, which causes the monitor to have a very high color temperature. So, uh, 
uh, I've actually had to set the color temperature to uh, 5200 K uh, in order to match the 6500 K of my Spider 4. So I'm not sure if that's due to something drifting in the meter or what, what's going on, but beyond that though, it, it's absolutely perfect. As, as we can see on a calibration report, if I do one, it, it comes out absolutely gorgeous. But uh, the really important part is the geometry adjustment. So when you start it up, you, you, you're prompted to do, do an auto science, which uh, will usually actually give you a pretty good geometry. In fact, it's been pretty much spotless every time, but that doesn't do 720p, so... If we go yeah on this, it'll do its thing, scale it up, but now we'll be all stretched and horrible because it's a, it seems to be just the scaling it to fit the tube, but uh, the geometry get out of this seems to be absolutely perfect. As you can, yeah, you're you're viewing that through the distortion of this camcorder's optics, but to me these squares uh, are just uh, spot on great and you can use the software to adjust everything you can make it real tiny and you can even move it around so let's just do a kind of widescreen thing there we go, that, that's widescreen enough so the software is pretty intuitive and you, how you can do all the advanced geometry stuff, you can kink the corners, you can I can keep both corners at once, you can I can pretty much adjust everything as far as geometry is concerned really. It's got all the things. Uh well, what's this do? Oh yeah you can actually I'm not certain what to call this really. You can kind of shift the center of the image around. And then we get to actually set the blanking. So this uh as your white border, that that's the absolute limits of the image, this is just one pixel wide at the edge of the screen and it's turned up the brightness and now you can uh, turn on hardware blanking it seems to just uh, turn off the uh, a beam while it's uh, for a little while so we can adjust it to blank there we can adjust it to just for the image like so now let's just reset it since I had it perfect before This is, a, this is a white uniformity setting you get. Uh, it's definitely not going to show up on camera, so I'm not going to touch it, but uh, it's just going to adjust uh, some really fine tuned uh, white uh, uniformity stuff. And on this page, you've got the moire canceller, which will, yeah, that's also not going to show up on camera, but it's showing a like one pixel grid alternating like a checkerboard pattern and you can adjust these to get rid of any distortions you might have across the screen and I've also got this set perfect uh, but this is the big one this is the focusing where you can actually focus the monitor in no less than 25 different zones so if we zoom into that we get this little arrow and whoosh, out of focus, into focus, out of focus and you can tweak it to your heart's content and once you've got the basic center focus set you can just uh, move out there and into the corners between the middle of the corners you can just literally get to set the focus for every single spot on the entire monitor individually and you, you don't have a very wide adjustment range in, in these outer parts but you do actually get to refocus the monitor in 25 different places and that, that is just amazing it, it's it's not going to show up well on camera I'm really sorry you can't really see it in its full glory but I can just sit here for an hour and just tweak every little spot to be razor sharp and it's absolutely amazing and it's such a bloody shame that that isn't working on the other one because when I see the sharpness on this one it's, it's even more abundantly clear that the other one is ever so slightly out of focus and it's driving me insane but at least I got this one and once you have every little point set to 
to be perfectly in focus and once you've got every little geometry adjustment set to be perfectly straight yes yeah, it's, it's these monitors just look astounding there's really yeah I've, I've never seen anything that compares honestly my, my plasma TV does have slightly better contrast but uh, this does have deeper black so this actually I would say looks better even than my Pioneer Kuro and that is the final adjustment you get from the software. And we do not want to save those settings. Oh, no, it reset to as I had it before. Let's do a diagnosis. So you can just shove it on there. A status update on your calibration. Oh, and it thinks it needs calibration. Huh, there we go. That's probably because I've got the. Uh, actual spider 4 calibrated gamma table loaded so it, it's gonna think that it's 8 of cal so there you go that's calibrated talk 5.04 in action on a barco reference calibrator 5 and at least to me that was incredibly satisfying because I, I put stupid amount of time into the other monitor only to find out it had a hardware fault so thank you for watching I hope you found this somewhat interesting cheerio Oh, and just a quick final note, if you're trying to get this running, I have to run it in Windows 2000 compatibility mode, and it will not run on Windows 7 64-bit, because you cannot get the barcode drivers working. But on uh, Windows 7 32-bit, uh, all functionality seems to be there, and it's running perfectly, except it'll crash if you press the help button. Cheerio.